Hey, here's an interesting new one on Alexander the Great. It uh, says, has the last will and testament of Alexander the Great finally been discovered? The last will and testament of Alexander the Great might have finally been discovered more than 2,000 years after his death. Here we see one of the pictures of him, popular depictions of him whenever he was younger, showing you that he had one blue eye and the other a brown and green mix, supposedly, depending on who you ask. And he uh, was half divine because of that. And showing his youth picture here, too, where he said that he had blonde hair when he was younger and it brassed out, bronzed out, and turned more brownish. But then you see the later depictions of him, like here, and it conspicuously shows him with even darker, if not black, hair. Here he is riding on Bucephalus with his troops. And interestingly, in this depiction, they show him with a pyramid for a hat on. Kind of interesting. So, a British expert claims to have unearthed the Macedonian king's dying wishes in an ancient text that has been hiding in plain sight for centuries. The long-dismissed Last Will and Testament divulges Alexander's plans for future of the Greco-Persian Empire that he ruled and his succession in which he had his claimed he named his son as the heir to his throne. Now it also reveals his burial wishes and discloses the beneficiaries to his vast fortune and power. Evidence for the lost will can be found in an ancient manuscript known as the Greek Alexander Romance, a book of fables that grew up around Alexander's exploits. Many compiled are likely compiled sometime in the century after Alexander's death. It nevertheless contains invaluable historical fragments about Alexander's campaigns in the Persian Empire. And here's the researcher that had gone into the uh, quite extensive study is Mr. Grant, and he did over a 10-year research project after he had the information pulled together. Historians have long believed that the last chapter of the romance housed in a political pamphlet that contained Alexander's will, but now have dismissed it as a work of early fiction, or until now. But a 10-year research project undertaken by London-based Alexander expert David Grant suggests otherwise the comprehensive study concludes that the will was based upon the genuine article, if skewed for political effects. And he tells you that it is one of the most influential military and political mandates in the ancient world. Buried by Alexander's generals, who knew the truth, it has vexed historians for 2,000 years. The revelation is detailed in Mr. Grant's new book, In Search of the Lost Testament of Alexander the Great, which hits, which hits the shelves this week. Pardon me. If Mr. Grant is correct, it overturns 2,000 years of academic study on the issue. He said the propaganda and political slant of the pamphlet cast serious doubts on the authenticity of the will, which at some point was absorbed by a developing book of fables we know today as the Greek Alexander Romance. Once it entered that romance, its fate was regulated from truth to fairy tales, though. Yet my research brings me to the overwhelming conclusion that Although adulterated, this is based on the original Last Testament of Alexander the Great, and it was one of the most influential military and political mandates in the ancient world. And here you can see it written in the Elder Script and a better picture of Alexander himself coming in, writing on Bucephalus. And, oh, there's the bull symbol on the back of his riding horse. Alexander the Great is arguably one of the history's most successful military campaigns. Undefeated in battle, he had carved out a vast empire stretching from Macedonian Greece into Europe to Persia, Egypt, and even parts of northern India by the time of his death at age, 80, or age 32. And he had taken over pretty much all of the lands that had ever been attempted to have been controlled by the Persians and others right there near to him. So he wanted to come in and reset things the way they were supposed to have been. Only five barely intact accounts of his death at Babylon in 323 BC survived to the present day. None are from eyewitnesses and all conflict in varying degrees. According to one account from the Roman area, uh, era, Alexander died leaving his kingdom to the strongest or most worthy, most worthy of his generals. In another version, he died speechless after being comatose for some days without making any plans for succession. Based on these testimonies, historians have ignored the will, 
but Mr. Grant, a classic graduate, considered the hypothesis to be highly suspect given Alexander's attention to detail and the power-hungry nature of his generals. So that kind of put a kibosh onto it. Look at this beautiful picture here. This is a mosaic that's been found, and uh, it is the Mosa, Mona Lisa of the Galilee. Sixteen centuries after the earthquake destroyed the Roman city of Sepphoris, a mosaic portrait of an unnamed woman was discovered among the ruins. And a uh, beautiful woman there with blondish brown hair glancing off. And you can see in the background a hunter holding a bow. I don't know if whether this is supposed to be uh, one of her children or her husband that's gone and she's thinking of him as he's gone hunting or if it's just a normal depiction at this point. I'll have to look into that for y'all. Quite a neat picture here, though. His research has spanned 10 years and tens of thousands of hours considering every conceivable avenue of investigation in order to put the record straight once and for all. The study most comprehensive of its kind undertaken on Alexander's succession challenged the very fabric of what Mr. Grant terms the standard model. Historians have come to accept the age of Alexander. Clues sit in the Greek Alexander romance, a priceless blend of fact and fable that absorbed a political pamphlet containing Alexander's posthumous wishes. So it's almost like a biblical tale or things along there, and people have relegated it pretty much to mythology at this point. This was penned after Alexander's death and is believed to have been circulated for propaganda purposes. The pamphlet claiming to contain Alexander's last will and testament has long been dismissed by Mr. Grant's peers due to its clear political nature and its eventual home in the romance. And I'd like to mention that whenever I was studying this type of thing, uh, I actually came up against the same thing. And I said, yeah, but da-da-da-da. And I was told by the man that he probably knew more about Alexander than I knew about my father, which I thought was somewhat insulting although he did it in a joking way and that Jesus was a carpenter and that people had been through this far too many times and no one's going to learn how to build a new house now and I was like really things like that show up all the time so I felt it to be a little challenge later I uh, tried to find out a lot of minutiae and things and of course I did that a lot with uh, D&D studies and things like that and was told by a bright man that uh, maybe that I should stay out of a field that people thought they were too intelligent in and to try to go into other fields and obscurity and so on and it kind of led me in another direction whereas I might have gone down a common direction most other people have gone and gone the road more traveled. The pamphlet claiming to contain Alexander's last will and testament has long been dismissed though by his peers and so Mr. Grant, a freelance academic and expert on Alexander disagrees this is the cover face for his book, In Search of Lost Testament of Alexander the Great. Beautiful headpiece they show in there, too. It says it's the unique backstory of Alexander and his successors, Lord, deceits, wars, and generals, and the literature that preserved them. He believes that Alexander's original will was suppressed by his most powerful generals because it named his then unborn half Asiatic son. Alexander the fourth and elder son Heracles as his successors and of course they didn't want that they felt they had this land I did a, vid a couple of sets of videos here not too long well, I guess right after the first of the year somebody had asked me to do it because some people in India were saying some odd thing about how that ended but uh, in that fact I ran it all the way over into his death and then did another little vid section about that and a lot of the unknown things and Alexander's tomb concept and then that led me to the vid that we did uh, that shows uh, this people thinking Alexander's tombs actually in America's somehow that there was redone over there so no one could loot it again but that's another strange conjecture also but this actually shows something pretty unique here he had an unborn half Asiatic son at the time once he had got over into Asia he had fallen in love with one of the queen or princess is there and uh, her name I believe was Cleo and so you wonder if anything was carried on past this but you have the name Cleopatra Patra being Pater being father and so who was Cleo's and the father and things and so it seems to have even carried on into that Ptolemaic dynasty in some way of that name although it 
wasn't always regulated only to her. Rather than accepting the leadership of what the Macedonians saw as half-breed sons, which would have been unthinkable, they fought each other for a power of bloody period of infighting and civil war known as the Successors' Wars. And we can tell that later this ended up making it to where they broke it apart in their dynasties. And it's also why it pretty much collapsed later without too much rain or time and uh, kind of ended into the Ptolemaic dynasties and so on and ran off from there. It was the decades following Alexander's death that Mr. Grant now believes the original will was secretly rewritten and distributed in a leaflet form by one of the competing generals to prove the legitimacy of, legitimacy of his own inheritance as well as to damn the generals that were opposing him. Interesting. So as well as naming Alexander's chosen successors, the leaflet contains a detail of a conspiracy among his generals to poison Alexander. And one wonders why he actually did die so rapidly, and one wonders if he did get poisoned in some way. It's said that he hung on for a few days, and conspicuously almost a little like the Bible, in one of these stories, he hung on, passed out, they thought he was pretty much gone for dead for three days. And apparently the generals were behind this a little bit, or behind the idea of, oh, he's dead, or whatever. But it's said that we're on his deathbed there, that he had rise from the dead right before he died, like some people do in comas and weird things like that, and that he rose from the dead, was standing over in at the corner of the room in some way. One of the girls came in that keeps care of him in some way, kind of like Mary in the Bible, kind of like at Christ's tomb, too, if you will, right? And came in and saw uh, that no one was in the bed, and she freaked out. When he did, somebody called upon her from the corner, and when she call, he called upon her, she recognized his voice, all of these things. She spoke to him for a minute, and then she ran off. But when they came back, there he was laying dead in the bed and rose three days later, all these type of things. So it almost has that weird flavor to it and some type of idea. But uh, did he get poisoned? And it looks like this points towards that may have been the reason that he had fell under. They thought it could have been from injuries. It could have been this, that, or just some odd sickness, things along that line, because during that time, you know, things could happen along that line. But mm, it does look like this might lead to a supposed poisoning of him. So as well as naming Alexander's chosen successors, the leaflet contains a detail of conspiracy among his generals to poison Alexander. Instead of being satisfied with the regions of empire Alexander had allotted to each of them to govern on behalf of his sons, they fought bitterly control, to control the entire empire. And in doing so, they ended up, that must be the end of the set. And in doing so, it set some dissension between some people, and, and you, you would know you would know that some of these people knew the truth and that later on in their successions and so on that that probably caused a large reason for it to have all decayed to something that we know today of it collapsing. Kind of neat here. I want to go into it a little bit more and I will look into it. If there's something real neat that I can bring to you, I'll definitely do another video on it. But uh, I stand on the back of giants just like this man does and I'm sure this is not going to be anything I can sit around and debunk. He's far too deep into it as it is itself. I remember this tale, though, and I remember the, the story of it and so on, and that people had talked about it, and that he was, he was poisoned, and then the generals did this thing, and it was always dismissed. Well, it was always dismissed because that would be a just a graphic embarrassment situation to the idea of what went on, and to allow it to go on, it was always hidden, it seems. Anyhow, guys, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy. Peace.